Hi, welcome to Amateurish Adventures. I'm Jason. Now, I'm going to do something a little bit different for you guys today. What I'm going to be doing is amateur radio. So if you're an amateur radio enthusiast or you just started the hobby or you're thinking about getting into the hobby, I am going to teach you how to do uh, digital modes, FT4, FT8, RTTY. You're going to be able to do that on any radio. Uh, whether it's digital capable or not, you could pick up a World War II radio right now and uh, actually start sending and receiving FTP. So what you are going to need for this is obviously a radio. You're going to need a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable. You will need a computer, MSHV, BKT time sync. And over-ear headphones are best for this. Optionally, you're going to want a USB sound card, powered speaker, and an audio splitter. Now, if you buy everything, <clears throat> sorry, if you buy everything, it is 65 bucks or less. Uh, and it's all available on Amazon. I have all of the links in the description below so that you could find Everything that I am using right now. Um, people say that the only way that you can actually accomplish what I am doing is with a sound link device. I've never had a sound link device. All the research that I was doing on the internet basically showed that you needed a, or a signal link. Sorry, not sound link, signal link. Now, all the research that I did on the internet and talking to other amateur radio operators, they all led me to believe that this is impossible to do without a signal link device and a cat cable. I'm going to show you how I did it and I'm going to show you myself making some contacts. I'm going to call out CQ and I am going to actually initiate some contacts with people that are currently in a QSO. You'll see it 100% works. It was a lot easier than I thought it would have been. It will be a lot easier than you think too. Just follow this video. You will have no problems getting this set up and running. You'll probably have it running within 30 minutes. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to explain now a few things that you need and show you a diagram of how exactly I got my radio set up and transmitting on FT8 and FT4 and RTTY. So what you're going to want is a radio, a 3.5 millimeter audio cable, a computer, MSHV, which is a program you're going to need to decode and transmit your digital signals, BKT time sync which is a program that you will need to sync your computer time. Uh, syncing your time is very important when you're dealing with digital. And then you're going to need over-the-ear headphones. You can use an, an external speaker. You can use the... Now, you can't use the speaker in your radio, but you can use the speaker on your computer if you'd like, but... You'll see why over-the-ear headphones are preferred. Optionally, if you do not have a computer with a mic jack and an audio out jack, um, or a line in jack, the line in jack can be used instead of the mic jack, you are going to want to get a USB sound card. Uh, you could plug this into USB. It's usually around 16 bucks. Or plug it in the USB on your computer, and it'll actually allow you to plug in a microphone and an external speaker. I am using one on my computer, so in the diagram you're going to see it. And the reason that I did that, even though I do have a mic out and a speaker out, is uh, I ended up doing that so that I can mute my computer, not have to listen to it, and watch something else at the same time. So I can watch TV on my computer, on the same computer that's actually doing FT8 and whatnot. I can watch TV and listen to my TV without having to listen to uh, MSHV sending and receiving digital 
signals. So you might want to end up getting a USB sound card just for that reason alone. All right, so here is how I wired it up. You got the speaker outline on your radio. You are going to take that speaker outline and you are going to run it to the mic in on your computer or on your USB sound card. So that is now allowing your computer, your radio, to communicate with MSHV. <clears throat> now, the simplest way to go about doing this would be to take the audio out and run it to a pair of headphones. Put your radio on Vox mode or voice activation so that every time your microphone hears something, it'll key up and transmit that. So you put it on voice activation and use a rubber band or something to sit your microphone within your headphones. Just keep in mind if you do use a rubber band, do not key up the switch on the mic. If you have a lollipop mic or something else, that's that's even better. Um, but do not key that up. The voice activation will do that on its own. And then what you'd end up doing is sending a signal through MSHV, a test signal. Uh, there's actually a feature, and I will show you when we go into MSHV, there's a feature that allows you to actually send out test tones. And that will allow you to test to see if your voice activation is actually working and if your sound card is set up properly to create the tones that you would like. Now, the way I did it, which costs a little bit more, but it works out a lot better in the long run, is I ended up getting an, an extra audio splitter. And I actually put an audio splitter between the radio and the computer. And I ran the second line that came out of this audio splitter to an external speaker. And that allows me to turn on the radio and turn on the speaker if I would like to actually hear the audio coming out of the radio. Um, if you don't do it that way, the only other way would be, I'd say, to adjust your computer settings to allow yourself to listen to your mic. I, anything that's going into your microphone would end up coming out of your speakers. And that's a workaround to it. If you want to take the cheaper alternative. But like I said, that is a, uh, that's a little more tricky to balance everything, and you can't multitask. You can't be running MSHV while you are watching TV or running another program that uses your sound card. Uh, the optional way using a USB sound card, like I do, you absolutely can do that. So, if you want to go with the cheapest way, you're looking at 21 bucks or less. If you want to go and get the optional equipment, you're looking at another 41 bucks. So for $65, you're going to be able to transmit and receive digital signals on any radio. Doesn't matter how old it is. It could be 70 years old. It could be 150 years old. You will still be able to send and receive and decode digital signal. Next, I will be showing you how to install and set up BKT TimeSync as well as MSHV to get your radio up and running. Here we go. I'm going to be showing you guys uh, MSHV and uh, BKT time sync right now. So let me pull up BKT time sync. <clears throat> Here are the settings that 
I've chosen for it, you can obviously make changes. I believe by default GPS configuration is on, but I don't have a GPS receiver in this computer, so that's actually pretty useless, so that's why it is disabled. But I do have it syncing every 30 minutes. I have it start on startup because this is the computer that I do digital work with. I have it sync on startup. <clears throat> and I have it start in the system tray so that I don't have to look at it. But this is all the settings you need. And you can hit sync now and make sure that it actually is syncing properly. And you'll notice that it did on that time. So. Now I'm going to put it in the system tray. All right, and here, here I have MSHV. As you can see, it's 28 megahertz. And the only reason it's only 28 megahertz is um, only a technician currently. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be studying, or I'm currently studying anyway, to get my general license, but. Currently, I'm only a tech, so I can only operate HF on 10 meters right now, with a few exceptions, but uh, that would be Morse code, which I'm learning. Morse code, I can go across a uh, few of the other bands. But anyway, here is MSHV. First, I am going to show you my log, so that you can see I am, in fact, making tons of uh, QSOs this way. I've got 2,053 in here. Uh, so this method 100% works. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to go into the sound settings right now. And as you can see, I'm using a USB sound driver. I am using the uh, optional USB sound card that I showed in the diagram earlier. And the reason that I am doing this, even though I do have a uh, mic in and audio out, I even have a line in on this computer. The reason that I am doing this is so that I can isolate the sound for the radio. Um, I do not want sounds coming out of the headphones that don't have to do with the radio itself, i.e. if you adjust the volume or you open up another window uh, you're watching a video on your computer you do not want that audio to transmit over the air the only audio you want to go out is the audio you intend to transmit that is why I'm using the optional USB sound card and I have it set up that way. That way there I ensure nothing that I do not want to go over the air goes over the air. So here's how I have my setup right now. I have my audio um, going out to the headphone out of the USB uh, sound card. And then I have the audio coming from the radio to the computer it's going into the USB sound card and as I mentioned before I have a splitter on that because I have an external speaker so that I can switch back and forth and actually hear my radio without changing the audio settings on my computer itself. So there's that setting for you. If you just match my settings for the most part you'll be fine with the exception that you might have to do your primary sound driver if you don't have a USB sound card. Alright the next thing that you're gonna want to touch you're not gonna want to do anything with interface you're not really nah, macros are good but this goes beyond uh, the macros are beyond the scope of this video today. Play control you can check here to make sure that your radio is actually functioning properly if I choose speakers and I turn up the volume on my radio you should see that oh never mind not on speakers it'll be on the microphone sorry about that you'll see that uh, microphone 2 volumes maxed out and I can bring it down that's actually the radio communicating microphone 3 is my speech right now to you guys 
Um, you can also verify on playback if you go and you hit tune on uh, MSHV, you will see that it'll hit here too. Let me, I believe I have to, nope, I do not have to monitor. So you see that it's coming out of my, uh, my USB sound card. That's exactly how I want it to be. You probably heard it beep going through this microphone, but this is the setup you are looking for right now. Um, once you have that done, there's really nothing else that you need to do. I mean, this is all optional stuff that you can change. Um, obviously, you're going to want to change your mode if you want to do FT4 or FT8. And you can change your threads, you can change anything you want. Like on here, I have only one. I'll go to three because it'll actually uh, allow me to do a little bit more. So here's all your your frequencies. This would automatically change the band on your radio if you had a cat cable put into it, but if you're watching this video, chances are you don't. So that is all you really need to know here. Just make sure that you're on the right frequency and you set your radio for the right frequency. So obviously if you're doing FT4, you're gonna to wanna to set your radio to 28.180 megahertz. Uh, if you switch bands, which you absolutely can do, and you have a license to do so, i.e. you're a general or uh, an extra class, you can absolutely run all of these bands. But for tech, I can only do 10 meter and six meter, which is 28 megahertz and 50 megahertz. And I can do uh, VHF, obviously. But that is it for me right now, as far as what my license is capable of. So now, I am going to activate this and we're going to see if we get some uh, people here. So I'm going to hit monitor now and then I'm going to turn the volume up and you'll see the input level up here. It says low input level. I'm turning the volume up on my radio just enough to clear off that low input level. <clears throat> That's never happened before, and I'm assuming that could be because of the screen recording that I am doing right now, or because I was messing with the settings, so no problem. Let me reopen it. Okay, now it's running properly, and you could see here in the corner, you have your sound settings, and if I turn my radio down, it'll go away. You wanna basically try to keep your radio in the green. Uh, you don't really want it to clip into the red much. Now, people that I have already talked to in the past will be marked in red. People that I have not yet talked to are in um, are in black like this. And you can tell right away where these people are from. If you have internet access, it'll tell you, like Francie, you right here. I am going to try to contact Iceland right here. This will be my first contact to Iceland if I can make this. And so as you can see, the radio keys up, VOX takes over, and I will show you, uh, I will show you on the camera in a couple minutes how this, how this works out. But the radio, the computer keys up when you see it turn red, the computer is keying up automatically and it is sending out the signal. And the microphone, the radio's microphone, because it's set to VOX, picks that up, and it automatically puts the radio into transmit mode for you. I don't know if I'll be able to hit this person, uh, and that's not based off of the setup here, that is based off of my homemade dipole that I have in a tree. Nope, I got a contact with him. So as you can tell, 
my radio automatically, or I should say MSHV automatically picked up that uh, he answered, and it's automatically sending out a return signal report for him, and boom, there is my first Icelandic contact. So you guys were able to actually see me make a contact that I've been struggling to make, and until now I hadn't been able to. I will try one more person here. I believe, yep, this person is in Canada. I'm going to see if I can contact them as well. Now, you see that I'm doing the contacting myself here, and this is FT4. You can tell based off the uh, 28.180 frequency. I do like running FT4 better than FT8. I like the fact that you can make more contacts on FT4 and with the setup that I currently have and with my homemade antenna, it likes to warm up a little bit after some time, so I like to keep my communications digitally as uh what's the word I'm looking for? I like to keep it as short as possible so that my antenna doesn't in fact heat up and the uh antenna tuner ends up having to work to readjust that antenna for me. But there you go. You saw that I did in fact make this Icelandic contact. Uh, he is now in my logbook. So I can now take him and uh, upload my log and send it to Log of the World and QRZ. So I am going to hop out of here now, out of the screenshot anyway. And I'm going to go back on the video camera and let you see from my aspect here how I control this. All right. So as you can see, I have a lapel mic here. Um, I, it's got noise cancellation, so I don't know if you're actually going to be able to hear when my radio keys up. But I do have my headphone. Oops, sorry about that. I have my headphone, or I should say my microphone here, or my radio, and I have a headphone right here that's coming out of the computer, out of the USB sound card. And all I'm holding that into place with is rubber bands. And that is basically just to keep the sound quieter when it's doing FT8. I will try to make a contact right now with W4CHA. They're here in the United States. And I will put the mic next to the radio so you can hear it key up. It does it every five seconds. Oh, I got a response already. Now, I don't know how well that's coming over the radio, but after this, I will do a better tone for you. All right, so W4CHA is now in the books. So that's a second contact that you've seen me make. Even further proof that this works. But here, I am going to lift up the microphone. I will take it off the radio and I will send a tone. I will tune my radio and you will hear the sound that is going to come out of the speaker, out of the headphone. So that is how it's communicating. It is literally sending the sound from that headphone through this microphone keying up VOX, which is voice activation, and that's what causes it to transmit. So it absolutely does work. Uh, I'll try a couple more here. Let me see. You got France right here. They're, they're giving me a negative five right now for a signal. Let's see if I can, if I can actually work them and get them in the log as well.
Yep. I got them too. So, further proof. And I will take you over here and show you the radio setup and everything as well so that you can see how this is working. Here is the radio. Frequency that I am keying up on. Right now that QSO has ended, so you're not going to see it key. Let me see if I can make another QSO here. Let's find somebody. Okay, negative 10. They're in the U.S. We'll see if we can hit them. So while I'm calling for them, you will see the radio key up automatically. Now I'm sending 75 watts out right now. The maximum I can do with this radio is 100. 75 is perfectly fine to send out. You should also be getting the audio, hopefully. Yep, and I got a response from him, too. So, I gave him a negative 9. He... Or, I'm sorry, he gave me a negative 9. I'm trying to give him a negative 19 right now, which means I can barely hear him. <clears throat> so... There's the speaker with the microphone. That's actually doing all the transmitting. Nope, there it is. I was able to complete that cue. So if you would like to do and call CQ rather than actually working people directly, if you want them to go out of their way and contact you, you can actually do it with this button right here. It says CQ KC1 ABT. I have nobody selected. I didn't double click on anybody to uh, start an interaction with them. So I can just hit auto. You pick what you want. If you want to talk first, you want to talk second. I will talk first. I just click auto and it's going to automatically send out CQ from your call sign. Mine's KC1ABT. And it'll just keep sending out CQ until you stop it or until somebody answers you. And once somebody answers you, it'll automatically go into your log and it'll complete the QSO and your computer will then stop transmitting. And you will have to uh, manually tell it to transmit oh. again. There we go. I am now getting a response. Let's see where he's from. They're also going to be from the United States. But I definitely got a response. So it is completing the QSO now. And it's going to put them in my log. And then I can upload my log to QRZ and to uh, Log of the World. So this is how I do it. And like I said, it works. It's the cheap way out. The more expensive way is the proper way, which you can absolutely do that. I can't explain to you how to set it up that way because I've never actually used a signal link myself. I've seen it used. Uh, a lot of amateur radio operators that I know use a signal link and they swear by it. K1VWQ, who got me this hat, in fact, uh, uses a signal link box. This is just showing you, nobody told me, as far as uh, I was concerned, it was impossible to do this. Nobody told me how to do it. I couldn't find a tutorial online for how to do this. That's one of the main reasons I'm making this tutorial. And like I said, asking anybody, they told me, no, you need a signal link. If you do not have a signal link and a cat cable, you cannot do it. And this just goes to prove that an FT891, which is it's digital capable, but it's not set up for digital by any means. Without the signal link and the cat cable, it is not set up. But you can use any radio. Like I said, you could use a radio from World War I if you wanted to, and uh, if it can Get on the frequencies, you can absolutely make it digital by doing what I just showed you here. 
So I hope you enjoyed the, the video. I hope you subscribe to us. I mean, I'll keep making content like this if you'd like. I just ask for a subscription in return. Be sure to check out our other videos, too. I have a lot of drone footage. Uh, me and my, my buddy Sean, we've gone to a few places now. We've flew the drone. We've done some exploring. So, absolutely, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you again for watching. Have a great day.